I was watching one of Professor Anton's videos yesterday, and he was talking about uh, a phenomenologist called either Drew Ledger or Drew Leader. I think we pronounce it in different ways. But either way, he's got this fantastic book called The Absent Body, which uh, Professor Anton was referring to, and which uh, is one of my favourite books, actually. It's great. Uh, and he talked about various things in there, about particularly the bits that have been just to me, which is ideas to do with the ecstatic body and the recessive body, which is, uh, well, I guess the kind of experience, experiences of what the body is, and, and it, it would take too long to explain right now. But uh, the specific bit that I'm interested in is this idea of the ecstatic body, which is the one in which the, I can explain this best, well, it's one in which the body kind of rushes away from itself or flies out of itself. Um, or rather, the, the kind of the self flies out of the body. I think is more accurate. Uh, and the kind of um, observations that kind of testify to that is the is the way that we engage with the world. So when the when I touch this tree, for example, the trunk of this tree here, I feel the trunk of the tree, but I'm feeling it on the trunk of the tree. That's where my feeling has taken place. I feel. I don't feel myself feeling the tree, I feel the tree. So the feeling, which is in actually presumably in part of my sensory motor system, but certainly is in my body, has flown out of my body and attached itself to the environment. And that's happening all the time. That's happening when I'm looking at things as well. The looking that's happening in... The, this, the, the seeing that's taking place is taking place presumably in my sensory motor system. I can kind of evidence that by closing my eyes and the seeing stops. So I'm, I'm clearly responsible for that seeing in the sense that I have some control over it, some measure of, um, of accountability in relation to what I'm looking at. But it doesn't feel like that. It feels like I'm seeing the tree. The seeing has, has, has flown out of myself, flown out of my body and attached itself to the objects of my perception. And the same goes for all of those kind of perceptual states. Uh, what Ladder also talks about in that, or Leader talks about, which also comes up elsewhere in Merleau-Ponty and other places, is uh, is a kind of transparency, I guess, that emerges from that. The the the, the bodily actions, the sensory motor actions, if you like, or the whatever the actions are, are kind of disappear in that. They they I guess they recede. I guess that's where a recessive body comes from. But in the body's in the, in the ecstatic flight of the self and the feelings of the self out of the body so that the seeing takes place on the tree, the feeling takes place on the tree. In that ecstatic flight, the body recedes into the background, the physical body recedes and becomes transparent. So I don't, uh, I don't experience myself experiencing, I just experience the experience, if I can confusingly put it that way. Uh, and I think I mentioned in another video I made some time ago about how Merleau-Ponty talks about the blind man's cane being like that. When the blind man's cane, when he's tapping his way along the um, along the pavement, he doesn't feel the, the he doesn't feel the, pa the the texture of the pavement or the the corners of the street in his hand. He feels it at the end of the cane. That that um, ecstatic flight of the self and the feelings of the self, uh, those entirely embodied sensory motor experiences, uh, don't take place in his hand at all. You know, they, 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 they take place at the end of the cane, which is, you know, no one in the right mind would say was part of the physical body, and yet, experientially, it is in this ecstatic flight. It's it's passed through the through the wood of the cane. Uh, why am I talking about this? I think I was really picking up on something Professor Anton said, which I just thought was a really great observation, I have to say, which is to do with writing, and how writing, when you write something or read something, I suppose. Um, you're, you don't experience, not only do you not experience the act of, of let's say, reading, you don't, not only do you not experience what your eyes are doing, you don't experience the movement of your eyes across the page, you don't experience the, the muscles in the, in, in the eyeball tightening the lens so you can focus on those words. You don't experience any of that stuff. Um, you experience the words on the page. But more than that, you don't even experience the words on the page, actually. The, not only is your body transparent and your eye transparent and that whole thing left behind in the ecstatic rush of the self 
through the eyes into the, onto the page, but the words themselves are left behind. You simply see through the words, or you appear to simply see through the words, to their meanings and to the uh, to the story that's being told. For example, on the page. Uh, now I know we know from well, from all sorts of theorists that that the language, written language and spoken language, isn't really transparent, but it absolutely has that appearance when you're um, intersecting with it. So the ecstatic flight of the self out of the body not only passes through the tissues of the flesh and through the blind man's cane and through the eye sockets out into the world, it also passes through the, uh, I guess, through the kind of semiotic signifiers to the to whatever is signified beyond that, to the reference or the, signi or the signified that lie on either side of that signification process, like the writing or the words you're hearing. Uh, and it seems to me that would also happen to us in a certain extent with just conceptualization. You know, when I'm thinking about something, just thinking about something, imagining something, or just dreaming about something, you know, my, that flight is also taking place. It might not be a taking place in this kind of weird three-dimensional environment I'm walking around in, but in a, perceptually, it absolutely is doing that, and it is moving out into that. Um, uh, into that conceptual space, and 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 again, ex ex ecstatically leaving me behind, leaving my embodied sense of a of a of a of a being with a sensory motor system behind in favour of, and it kind of attaching itself to those concepts. So I don't I don't uh, feel myself thinking about the thoughts. I just think the thoughts, whatever they are. So that kind of intentional ecstatic rush away from the self towards semiotic content, meaningful content, I think also seems to happen in, in, in conceptualization as well. I think, it's, yeah, I think that's pretty much all I want to say. I mean, what I wanted to go on to, but I think I need to do some more work in it first, is this idea of an inside and outside. Because there's something very peculiar happening, I think, there, for me at least, or paradoxical, in terms of what's inside that's rushing out. What is this ecstatic flight? Who is the pilot? <laughs>